What's up everyone, Klein Science Guy back again with another video. So now I'm stopping by. Just want to drop a video, a little something to get you prepared for the test on Friday. And what I'm going to show you are some graphs, graphs for periodic trends. Obviously we know that we've been studying periodic trends for this unit, but what's going to be an important skill for you to have for this test is being able to interpret graphs to tell me some trends and some information that this graph is portraying. So we'll go through each one of our trends and look at the graphs and hopefully we'll, it'll start to kind of, we'll start to catch on as we, we move on in this video. So atomic, we'll, first we'll start with atomic radius. This graph we're measuring, if you look at the title, atomic radius versus the atomic number. So essentially what we're looking at is atomic radius on the y-axis and the atomic number is on the x-axis. So each one of these data points represents an element. So you should be able to, looking at, let's say, 5, for instance, 5 is boron on the periodic table, we'd be able to move up and just see that the atomic radius falls somewhere in the 90 range. So I've put circles and squares on this graph to help symbolize some things. So these circles represent the start of each period. So this would be period 1, hydrogen. This would be period two, starting with lithium, period three, starting with sodium, and then lastly, period four, starting with potassium. And then each one of these green squares indicates the end of a period. So this would be helium, this would be neon, this would be argon, and then krypton. Okay, so start of a period, end of a period, start of a period, end of a period. So essentially, we're moving across the periodic table from left to right, from circle to square. All right, so what I'm looking for here is a trend. I know that this is the start of a period and this is the end of a period. If I see that my graph is going downwards, if it's decreasing, that must mean that the atomic radius from the start of a period to the end of a period is decreasing. We're going from larger to smaller. Okay, so we should be pretty comfortable knowing that going across a period, we, the atomic radius is decreasing. So then, if I look at each one of these circles, this is the beginning of a group, of a period. So each time I go to a new circle, I'm essentially just going down the same group, group number one. So as you see, from hydrogen to lithium, I've got an increase in atomic number. From lithium to sodium, I've got an increase in atomic number. And then lastly, from sodium to potassium, guess, guess what? Another increase. So... What I can tell from this entire graph here that the trend in atomic radius going down a group is that the atomic radius increases. And of course, we know this because each time we enter a new period, we, get, we gain another shell, another ring, which is then increasing my atomic radius. So hopefully we're able to see that from these graphs. Now let's see what we can get from ionization energy. So <clears throat> same thing here. Circles represent the start of a period. Squares represent the end of a period. Now, ionization energy is the definite is defined as the energy that it takes to pull an electron away from the outermost shell. So, the energy it essentially takes to become an ion. So, uh, what I'm looking at here is from the start of a period to the end of a period. So, from lithium to neon my ionization energy clearly looks to be going in an upward fashion, meaning that my ionization energy is increasing. Something really important to note for ionization energy, the higher your ionization energy is, the more difficult it's going to be to create an ion, to pull an electron away. So if these are our noble gases, if this is neon, neon is going to be very hesitant to let anybody take any of its electrons. Because it has eight, it feels stable. So that would make sense that our noble gases at the end of each period would have the highest ionization energy. Okay, so as you can see, from start of a period to the end of a period, from left to right, we have an increase in ionization energy. Now let's take a look at down a group. Going down a group, so uh, just pretend like there's hydrogen right here. And then we've got lithium, sodium, potassium. As we go down my group, group number one, we see a downward trend, meaning that ionization energy going down a group is decreasing. Okay, so ionization energy increasing across a period, decreasing as you go down a group. And of course, you should be able to explain why this is on the test. But for the sake of this video, we're just focusing on trends on a graph. 
All right. So there's ionization energy. And lastly, electronegativity. Here's electronegativity. We're seeing a, a, we're seeing a pretty useful trend here as well. This one's a little bit different uh, compared to the other two, but we do see a trend most definitely. So start, this should be the start of a period, end of a period, start of a period, end of a period, and so on and so forth. So what we're seeing as I go, as I go across a period, this is actually my start of my period and this is the end of my period. Across a period going from lithium to neon, my electronegativity is increasing. So across a period, electronegativity increases. Same here. Across a period, electronegativity increases. So um, as we know, electronegativity is defined as the tendency or the likelihood of an atom to take in an electron, to bring an electron in for the sake of bonding. So across a period, my electronegativity should be increasing. And then as you go down a group, as you go down a group, you should see that there is a decrease in electronegativity. Okay, so looking at these graphs, we need to really be good at uh, noticing and realizing and kind of seeing trends, recognizing trends, and being able to explain why these trends are happening. All right, hope this video was helpful. If it is, make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see, if there's anything else that you want to see in preparation for the test. Be more than happy to help you all out with something like that. So leave me a comment and I'll Catch y'all later.